Working on the United States and Mexico border is different than working anywhere else in the country. There are two types of illegal activity in this area that you need to be aware of that could affect your work or put you in danger. Drug smuggling and illegal immigration. Let's take a look at drug smuggling. Any place that you go along the border, um, you'll find a lot of smuggling activity, a lot of cross-border illegal activity. Uh, we have cartels that smuggle narcotics into the United States from Mexico in this area, and these people have historically shown themselves to have no concern for uh, human life. So they're trying to move through as quickly as they can. They move very, very quickly. Um, they often have a couple of people that are carrying food and water for them, and almost all of them have weapons of some kind. They have scouts on the hills above that will be radioing if they see any law enforcement in the area so that they change their route. They do not want to be caught. It's a felony that they're committing, and um, they often, when they're detected, they'll often run. They hide their drugs um, and hope to come back to them, potentially. We view the drug smokers as being more dangerous because they have a lot more at stake monetarily. The, the drugs they're moving through are, are very valuable. It's got high commercial value, and if you get in their way, they have a lot to lose. We also know that a lot of them, or a certain percentage of them, are armed, so they're a lot more potentially dangerous than illegal migrants. And then there's also the knowledge that some of them are on drugs at the time that they're, they're moving the drugs and could be something that makes them extra aggressive and less rational, methamphetamines and who knows what else. So their, their behavior, you can't predict it to be a rational response to just encountering you out in the, in the back country. Historically, the drug and the, the human trade has been separate, but right now we're seeing a, more of a trend for the drug cartels to be um, controlling the cross-border human trade as well. We've seen instances where they will send a vehicle loaded with humans across and we'll uh, all drive over and catch it and then while um, the agents are occupied with that they'll send in a load of narcotics in the same area directly afterwards and uh, yeah, they're all tied together. Now let's turn to the other major problem on the border, illegal immigration. It includes the illegal immigrants themselves and the people who smuggle them for money, known as coyotes. You know, I've been here a long time, and so when I first started here, it, it was rare to, to see an immigrant. And when we did, it might have been one, one person, a single person. These days, it, it's common to see 20 to 50 to even 70 you know, alongside the road that Border Patrol's apprehended. Virtually every cross-section that you can think about, everything from young kids basically and moms, you know, all the way through to um, very elderly people. It's not uncommon to have um, people in a group that, uh, of undocumented immigrants that might be 75 or 80 years old. Um, that are coming across and so you get every cross-section that you can imagine and this particular area here has got more of what the Border Patrol calls OTMs other than Mexicans. So they're Guatemalans and they're from all over the world that come through this particular area. From what we understand there's, there's a lot of money involved. Prices that we've heard at this point are anywhere from $1,200 on up depending upon the type of transportation you're going to get once you get into the United States. There's a lot at stake, and so people are, I mean, they're going to do whatever they have to do to get through, because they're, sometimes they're life savings. Often people actually don't even have the funds when they get here. They become indentured servants to their coyotes until they can make that money, and the coyotes will threaten their families until they get that money. Well, the coyotes are the, the people, the smugglers, who lead people through the park, through this area, and, and lead them north. Um, they're often the ones who arrange for the whole transportation cycle for the people to move into the United States. So it can involve leading them through on foot and also then getting them to a vehicle or a safe house or anything like that. Um, they are usually, they usually carry weapons of some kind, either guns or knives, and uh, they almost always have cell phones, sometimes radios. And they often, when they're caught, will try to get rid of those things and blend in with the rest of the group and not identify themselves as, as a coyote. The potential is that they could try to protect themselves or try to get away by injuring somebody who's trying to get in their way, and that potential is very, very high. Poyero is the guy that guides them to the border, 
they're the ones that leave them out in the woods. Uh, and uh, these people are not from this area. They don't know the country and they get lost. So all of a sudden they see a road and they start sticking to the road instead of going up in the mountains. They stick in the road and keep on walking until they get some help. The ones that we meet with, usually they don't have water and they're thirsty and they're stopping to talk to anybody that's in the, along the road to try to get some water from them to keep on going. But they try to stay on the road so they can get help because they're lost. The pollero usually tells them, I'll be back in a minute. They disappear and they leave them out there. These folks are told when they get to the Seven Wire International Fence that Phoenix or Tucson is just over the hill. And they have no idea that they are in for miles, miles upon miles of rugged walking in an area that's got no water, no potable water. They're just out there on their own, and I don't think they know that. We've had what we call instances of border banditry where um, criminals come across from, uh, from Mexico, and a lot of them are tied into the smuggling rings. So what's happening is they're robbing the people that they're smuggling across, which would seem to be an example of the snake eating its own tail, but they're not in it for the people, they're in it for the money. And so um, we've had many instances of uh, armed robberies, especially in this area. We've had numerous instances of uh, groups being told to uh, strip down, strip naked. They've held guns to their heads. They've uh, assaulted the women and they steal all their money and send them on their way destitute.